Northern Ireland, a small step to a giant adventure. Book your next giant adventure at discovernorthernireland.com. Good morning, everyone. Tuning in from all over the world to Fela and Fobel's launch of Belfast's latest, most dynamic and innovative walking trail that celebrates the great abolitionist and anti-slave trade campaigner Frederick Douglass's time in historical Belfast. We want to acknowledge and thank the entire team at Belfast Media Group who have for many years now used their channels and their platform to showcase uh, progress and change in this great city. We want to also acknowledge the sterling work um, and, and the person who conceived this idea, who has written the trail and done all of the research to bring it to life, the great Christine Keneally from Quinnipiac University. Uh, we want to thank Senator Tim Kennedy from New York State. And of course, we want to mention the great Dennis Brownlee, who has made a contribution to this short little launch here today. Welcome to the virtual launch of the new Frederick Douglass Belfast Trail. My name is Emer Harkey, the Heritage Officer here in RC Conula, the James Conley Visitor Centre. Frederick Douglass, abolitionist, champion of equality and friend of Ireland, visited Belfast in 1845 as part of his lecture tour of Ireland. Of his visit he said, Wherever else I feel myself to be a stranger, I will remember I have a home in Belfast. This new self-guided publication, researched and produced by leading academic Christine Keneally, and supported by Belfast Media Group and Falcha First You Hear, takes visitors on a journey through historic Belfast while uncovering the hidden heritage of Frederick Douglass in our city. Frederick Douglass had a profound impact on Belfast and continues to inspire citizens to this very day, so it is important that Belfast recognise the contribution he made to our city. I am now delighted to introduce Professor Christine Keneally of Quinnipiac University, who was instrumental in the research and design of this tour. We hope you enjoy the launch. Um, welcome. Today we are launching the Frederick Douglass Trail in Belfast. I'm Christine Keneally. I'm a historian at Quinnipiac University in Connecticut. And just to start off, this project is part of a larger project that looks at other black abolitionists who visited Ireland between 1790 and 1860. Of course, Frederick Douglass is the most famous one. If you don't know much about Frederick Douglass, just very briefly, he was born in 1818 into enslavement. He escaped when he was 20 years old. He changed his name then to Frederick Douglass. He became a lecturer for the Anti-Slavery Society, and in 1845, he published his life story. His life story became very famous, but it meant he was in danger of being recaptured and re-enslaved. So he decided to travel to the United Kingdom. He sailed to Liverpool in August 1845, spent two days in Liverpool and then travelled to Ireland. He intended to stay four days in Ireland, but he was made so welcome he stayed for four months. And during that time, he visited Dublin, Wexford, Waterford, Yall, Cork, Limerick and finally Belfast. When he arrived in Dublin, he wrote that night to his mentor, William Lloyd Garrison, to say he was safe in old Dublin. And he spent a month in Dublin, and so we have created a walking trail in Dublin, which you can see before you. So Belfast is our second walking trail. So Frederick came to Belfast at the end of his four-month visit, and he was in Belfast December and early January 1846. In Belfast, he was hosted by the Belfast Anti-Slavery Society, an organisation founded in the 1830s that was mostly Protestant. So it was very different from the people who had been his hosts in the rest of Ireland. The Belfast Society was quite moderate and they opposed the radicalism of William Lloyd Garrison, Frederick's mentor. And this are the places the trail takes you to in Belfast. And we have chosen 13 different places that recreate some of the sights, sounds, smells and buildings that Frederick would have seen during his stay in the town. And this is very much a drop in, drop out. You can start at any point. You can do a few places and do it the next day. So it's very, very flexible. And just to say Belfast in the 1840s, it was not a city at that point, it was a town. It was predominantly Presbyterian. Linen was very much um, at the core of the economy, but shipbuilding was also becoming very important. And the population of Belfast was increasing rapidly, 10,000 people in 1810, over 
5,000 people in 1841, around the time that Frederick visited. And we know 1845 also starts the onset of the Great Hunger in Ireland. And just to say Belfast was affected because most of the poor people in Belfast subsisted on potatoes. So Belfast was affected by the famine. So to the trail, the starting point of the trail is the Clifton Street Cemetery, a beautiful, beautiful Georgian building, very much associated with the Belfast Charitable Society. It's also associated with one of the heroes of abolition in Belfast, Mary Ann McCracken. And Mary Ann was a humanitarian, a nationalist, a socialist, and she was also a founder of Belfast Female Anti-Slavery Society. She was buried in the cemetery, sadly in an unmarked grave. It took 40 years before she had a headstone. And at that point, she was joined by her beloved brother, Henry Joy, who had been hanged in 1798 for his part in the Rising. And part of the hidden history of this cemetery is recently we've discovered that an escaped slave, William John Brown from Maryland, as was Frederick Douglass, is also buried here. Sadly, in an unmarked plot, we don't know where he's buried. We do know that his wife and children were still enslaved. Um, our second stop on the trail is Clifton House, which is very close to the cemetery. And again, it's associated with the Belfast Charitable Society, an organisation founded in the 18th century to help the poor and vulnerable of the town. And the beautiful Georgian building still exists, again, very much associated with the McCracken family, including Mary Ann McCracken. Our third stop is somewhere you may not have heard of, Lancastrian School. This school system existed throughout the United Kingdom and it was mostly for poor children. And Frederick held one of his final meetings in Ireland at the Lancastrian School. He spoke to the children about the evils of alcohol. And the school was actually located in the local meeting house for the Quakers and part of that meeting house still survive. So you can visit there and see where Frederick spoke on the evils of alcohol. And true to his beliefs, when Frederick was in Belfast, he stayed in a temperance hotel. And the Victoria Temperance Hotel, corner of York and Donegal Street. Uh, many temperance hotels, which might seem odd, served fine wines. Uh, they believed only uh, spirits were evil. But his hotel served nothing. And unfortunately, this hotel did not survive. By 1850, it had closed down. And in 1941, it was bombed during the Blitz. So there are no remains of the hotel where Frederick stayed. But that is where he stayed. The Cathedral Quarter is now a very famous part of the Heritage Trail in Belfast, and part of it down the Gold Street was host to many, many churches, both then and both now. And one of the first places that Frederick spoke at was what was called the Independent Church on Donegal Street. It then became part of the Congregation Church and it then unfortunately was knocked down. And again, it was bombed during the Blitz, but it was rebuilt and part of it still remains to this day. And it is now known as Redeemer Central, a non-sectarian, non-religious meeting place. Frederick spoke in another church in Donegal Street. Unfortunately, now it's totally gone, but very famous because it was associated with a man called Isaac Nelson, a Presbyterian minister who was known to be a bit of a maverick. In his later life, he became a nationalist and stood as nationalist MP for County Mayo. Of course, the Presbyterian Church in Belfast was shocked and they allowed the church to go into disuse and it was eventually demolished. But Isaac Nelson is remembered because a church in the Shankill Road was dedicated to him. That church does survive, although it is no longer functioning as a place of worship. And that is the church if you want to also visit that. A slightly unusual place to visit, number six, is the Calder Fountain. And this man, Francis Calder, formerly of the Royal Navy, was one of Frederick's hosts while Frederick was in Belfast. And Calder was known for his love of animals. And he was very concerned that cattle and horses did not get enough fresh water while they were walking through the streets. So he erected a number of water troughs. And in memory of what he did for animals, this beautiful Calder Memorial was erected as a tribute to Francis Calder. So again, um, a place you can visit and it's in the elegant Custom House Square adjoining the waterfront. 
So when Frederick spoke in Belfast, one of the places he visited was the beautiful commercial buildings and assembly room. And when Frederick left Belfast, a beautiful breakfast was held in his honour. And at the breakfast, the Reverend Nelson gave him a pocket Bible. At that breakfast, it was also announced that Marianne McCracken and some other women in Belfast would form a Belfast anti-slavery society. Uh, this beautiful building was also home to a bank, to a newspaper, as well as all these social functions. More recently, part of it has been transformed into a bar called the Northern Wig. So again, a place you might visit and maybe even take a few refreshments. And that is Frederick Douglass, age 27, the age he was when he was in Belfast. Uh, our next stop, number eight, is Rosemary Street. Again, very famous to anybody who knows Belfast. And this is an image of Rosemary Street in about 1840, even recognisable to this day. And Rosemary Street was home to this beautiful church, which still survives, but it was home to two other Presbyterian churches. Unfortunately, they have not survived. But the Rosemary Street Presbyterian Church has the honour of being the oldest place of worship in Belfast. Rosemary Street has been associated with periods of radicalism, including the founding of the United Irishmen in the 1790s, again, very much with the McCracken family. It's also been host to a number of other black abolitionists, including who you see before you, Odela Equiano, who came to Belfast in 1791 and was hosted by the United Irishmen. Charles Riemann spoke in this church in 1841, and Henry Highland Garland spoke in this church in 1851. So it has a very long, honourable tradition of being associated with abolition and with other radical causes. A church that Frederick spoke at that sadly no longer survives is was on Donegal Place. Um, if you know Belfast, you'll know it's sort of down from what is now the City Hall, down from what was Marks and Spencers, we hope it will survive, and a bit up from Royal Avenue. This church was built in the 1840s, it was demolished in the 1880s, Frederick spoke there, but changes in Methodism meant it was no longer needed, and so it was closed down and had a short life. The next stop is the Black Man. And you will notice the black man is not black. He's an oxidized murky green. And it's a tribute to the Reverend Henry Cook. And Henry Cook was a Presbyterian minister. But unlike some of the other Presbyterian ministers we've talked about, he was incredibly conservative. He was anti-Catholic, anti-nationalist. He hated Daniel O'Connell, leader of the repeal movement. But for conservative Protestants, he was a hero and they felt he should be memorialized. And so in 1876, this statue was put up in honor of him. What we do know is though, although Cook supported abolition, he did not meet Frederick Douglass. And this is probably because Frederick Douglass was very critical of Presbyterian churches who worked with slaveholders in America. And if you look at the statue, you'll notice that Cook's back is turned on this beautiful school just across from it, the Royal Academical Institution, which was known for its liberal values, which Cook hated. And this beautiful school was host to many anti-slavery meetings in the 1840s and later. A building that does exist where Frederick also spoke at is the Methodist Church on Donegal Square East. The facade remains, but it was recently taken over by the Ulster Bank. And when Frederick was in Belfast in the 1840s, City Hall was not there. As I said, Belfast was not a city, but in that beautiful square was this very elegant, gorgeous building, the White Linen Hall. Again, the centre of the linen industry in the north of Ireland. When Belfast became a city in 1888, it was decided to demolish this building and to put a city hall in its place. The City Hall was opened in 1906. And recently it's been decided to erect a statue to Mary Ann McCracken in the site of City Hall. So very, very appropriate. The Music Hall again no longer exists, but it was opened in the 1840s by the town's Anna Cree on Tick Society. A hard word to say, and if you don't know what they are, they were devoted to the Greek god of that name, who loved wine and music. And Belfast in the 1840s was noted for the excellence of its entertainment, including its music. 
Frederick spoke in the Music Hall in October 1846. He was joined by his mentor from America, William Lloyd Garrison. William Lloyd Garrison took the lead and he was very antagonistic, very critical of Belfast people and of the churches and ended up being booed. So it was not a happy ending. Unfortunately, the musical no longer survives. It was demolished in 18, sorry, in 1983, despite being seen as a place of architectural significance. But we do still have a small memorial in the form of the Music Hall Lane sign, which does survive. And our final place on this trail is the home of Mary Ann McCracken on the Donegal Pass. So we start and we end with this incredible woman. And as Belfast spread and industrialized after 1850, so too did the town spread out. And so these houses were part of that spreading out of the town. Mary Ann McCracken lived here in her 80s and 90s. And this incredible woman, even at that age, was still a political activist and would go down to Belfast docks and urge emigrants not to get tied up with slavery when they went to America, but to support abolition. So an incredible, incredible woman who was an activist to the very end of her life. And this place is significant because it's one of the few places that actually acknowledges Belfast's female past and Belfast's abolitionist past. And there is a small blue plaque to Mary Ann McCracken. And she is simply described as a social reformer. And that is the young Mary Ann. And just one final place that is not on the trail, but definitely worth a visit. It's on the Peace Wall near the Falls Road. It's a beautiful mural to Frederick Douglass. There was one, just a Frederick, it was painted over. This one incorporates many human rights activists. You can see Daniel O'Connell, Mary Ann McCracken, uh, Mandela, President Obama. And since 2014, Congressman John Lewis has been included. So it's a real tribute of the people of Belfast to human rights activists. And just finally, Frederick left Belfast in January 1846. He traveled to Scotland. In Scotland, he felt increasingly homesick. Uh, a few months later, some women abolitionists purchased his freedom. And finally, in April 1847, Frederick was able to return to America to his wife and his young four children. He never returned to Belfast again. Good morning. I'm Dennis Brownlee, the founder and chairman of the African-American Irish Diaspora Network. On behalf of AAIDN, or Aiden, I'd like to welcome everyone to this virtual launch of the Frederick Douglass Trail in Belfast, part of the Frederick Douglass Way. The mission of Aiden is to foster affirmative relationships between African Americans and Ireland through shared heritage and culture. It is estimated that roughly a third of African Americans have some Irish ancestry, and Aiden's mission is to bring the African American and Irish communities together to work for peace, human rights, and economic opportunity for all people throughout the world. We are honored to have Professor Christine Keneally as a board member of Aden. She brought the idea of developing Frederick Douglass Way in Ireland and the Frederick Douglass Trail in the United States to Aden based on her world-renowned research on Frederick Douglass and more than two dozen black abolitionists who visited Ireland in the 19th century. These bold and brilliant men and women were at the forefront of seeking freedom for more than 6 million of their fellow people of African descent who remained enslaved in the Western Hemisphere with almost no pathway to freedom and human rights. The Frederick Douglass Way symbolizes the important historical bonds between African Americans in Ireland. It traces Douglass's journey throughout Ireland from Dublin to Belfast and all points in between. His engagement with the people of Ireland and his transformation while there to become a global leader in the fight against oppression. It will provide a dynamic experience that features maps and historical markers along the way and be accompanied by an app, a website, and printed guides with more information. It will also connect with the National Famine Way. In the United States, there will be a companion Frederick Douglass Trail that traces some of his most important milestones from his birthplace on Maryland's Eastern Shore to New York, Massachusetts, and Washington, DC, among many other locations where he lived, worked and lectured. In Ireland, Belfast is where Douglas spent the last portion of his time during his historic visit 
And about Belfast, he said, wherever else I feel myself to be a stranger, I will remember I have a home in Belfast. During the past year, as we celebrated the 175th anniversary of Frederick Douglass's visit to Ireland, it is important to note that the global mission of freedom and social justice championed by Frederick Douglass and supported so ardently by the people of Belfast resonated through to the American civil rights movement in the 1960s and in turn to the peace movement in Northern Ireland that resulted in the Good Friday Agreement. With the launch of this Belfast segment of Frederick Douglass Way, we hope that people from around the globe will visit and that they will be similarly inspired as Frederick Douglass was. We are pleased to have been able to work with Christine Keneally on the trail, walking it virtually with all of you today and looking forward to experiencing it soon with you in person in Belfast. And now, enjoy the trail. Hey everybody, I'm Senator Tim Kennedy coming to you from Buffalo, New York. Now, we're getting a little bit of Irish weather here with a tad bit of rain. I'm right in the heart of the city of Buffalo, right in the heart of the African American Heritage Corridor, right in the footsteps of Frederick Douglass and in front of the Michigan Street Baptist Church that was actually built in 1845, the same year Frederick Douglass fled the United States for freedom and harbor in the great country of Ireland and on the streets of Belfast included. I'm so proud of each and every one of you and the work that you've done to celebrate the legacy of Frederick Douglass, the mark that he made on human rights all across the globe. And I want to congratulate especially my friends Martino Mueller, head of Belfast Media Group, and Christine Keneally, professor at Quinnipiac University for all of their tremendous leadership and work. And I want to welcome you all to Buffalo. When you have a moment, come visit us here. Come see us at the African American Heritage Corridor. We are building out history. We're celebrating history and Frederick Douglass in the footsteps of Frederick Douglass right in the heart of the city of Buffalo and this great corridor are a part of it. So congratulations for celebrating Frederick's life and legacy in Belfast. I can't wait to get there to see you in person and walk the Heritage Trail dedicated to Frederick Douglass while I'm there with you. Thanks so much, everybody. Congrats again. On behalf of Fulcher Forest, you here, tasked with promoting tourism in West Belfast and connecting our tourism offering in with the rest of the city. We're delighted to be the distribution partners of the new publication. Uh, you can download the guide from our website, www.visitwestbelfast.com, and we will be distributing the guide right across key tourism hotspots in the city, including the Visit Belfast Welcome Centre, City Hall, a number of hotels and key heritage attractions right across the city. So over the next number of months, and in the years to come when you visit Belfast, you can now uncover the once hidden history and heritage associated with Frederick Douglass's time here. We're absolutely thrilled and delighted to be part of this wonderful, innovative, dynamic and fitting project and indeed tribute to not just Frederick Douglass, but to all of those today in Belfast that continue to fight for equality and rights for all.